Hello everybody. I am recording this uh, on the eve before the Nations League starts, but this video posts tomorrow. So when you start this, this is the day when the Nations League starts. And I thought, let's review the jerseys a little bit as well, most of which you have already seen since they were featured at the World Cup for League A. Uh, I think there are only two nations, my two favorites, Italy and the Netherlands, that have not featured at the World Cup. For that reason, I will actually not rate these jerseys. I will just tell you what I like and I don't like. Maybe I'll get a rating out there, but I think I want to leave this actually for my blog. I want to keep national team jerseys, um, the rating for my written blog, but I'll run through all of them and maybe point out a few things that I like and dislike. Uh, today I'm going to look at League A groups 1 and 2 and I will try to post uh, or make groups 3 and 4 tomorrow and do something similar for League B and in the October window I will try to get all the jerseys for League C and D which are a little bit harder to find. Uh, already in League B there are a few where I'm not entirely certain or there is one that I actually cannot really find. Uh, and last thing, you probably wonder what I'm wearing. It's the Bulgaria away jersey and they still had Kappa. Uh, my wife made me aware that tomorrow is kind of a Bulgarian Independence Day. So there you go. Let's get right to it. We'll start with group one, which is clearly the glamour group. And the first jersey is, of course, Germany. They're the top seed and they will play their first game against France. The jersey that we see here is still the World Cup version where we have the World Cup winner's badge. So um, you have to imagine without, and actually you cannot find a picture of that one, only here for the children's set. This is how it will look like when they play tomorrow. Um, it actually, even without the badge, it looks even more boring in a way. I think it's great that they try to go uh, to mimic a classic jersey design, but I really wish there would be a little bit more color in there. Um, it's also the one reason I found I saw this uh, jersey a few times quite cheap. I don't have a Germany jersey, I don't really want a Germany jersey, but I feel with having this channel I should have one just for display. So yeah, the pattern, I think it's smart how they did this pattern, it's much better than in the original 1988-91 to 91 version. Um, but the color is missing. I really think that the color is missing here and therefore I never liked it that much. Also uh, the lettering, if you see Groß here, the R could be an A, uh, the S looks more like a 5. It uh, when I saw it first, I thought, okay, but the more I see it, the worse it gets. Uh, yeah, the lettering was not a nice one on the back. So, uh, not a bad jersey overall, but not my favorite. And as I said, they will not have the World Cup winners patch because they will play the World Cup winner tomorrow. But before that, we look also at the away jersey, which of course, this one I love. This the green. I, as I said, I don't necessarily want to have a Germany jersey, but if it was, it should have been something. It should be something like this. I really love this jersey, even with the crazy uh, pattern, which is not in reference to the look that they had in the semi-final against England in 1990. But this is a pattern that actually a Manchester United uh, third jersey. It's <laughs> a little bit contentious, but you know, it reminds you on uh, the back, same thing. Again, there's the mono back, and I would be curious to see whether they have to use the same pattern now under the new UEFA rules. Speaking new UEFA rules, the France home jersey is not the one with the one star, of course. The number will, will be built inside. There are a few things that we really have to talk here. Of course, it will feature the two stars. That's a given. Uh, it will be the first time that uh, France will wear two stars. And this is the way that it's sold in the stores. However, they will also wear the World Cup winner's badge. And I really hope they apply it like here in the middle of the jersey. It would fit, I think, and it, it looks much nicer. Yes, I would wish that the number was then uh, below the badge. But I guess this is how they do it now. I really hope they don't do this where they have the um, winner's shield above the swoosh. That would look horrible. But as you know, I've worn this jersey a lot. I got it with one star and I love it. This is a great jersey. I think I gave it eight stars in my review. Um, I still would go with that. 
it's not the perfect frost jersey, but I really, really, really like it. The navy blue, then you have uh, the little splash here. Um, there's just something about it that I like. Uh, the back, of course, is just the plain uh, navy blue, and then you see the pattern, and I really like the French flag on the back. The away jersey I didn't like as much. Uh, you don't see it as much if you uh, go from, from, from this, and it looks uh, white, but all the specks that are on there, I'm not a fan of. And again, they will have the World Cup winners uh, patch and two stars. I couldn't even find a version of that one yet in that configuration. The back actually looks all right, but again, I wish the specs. It looks like a pyjama to me. And then of course, then there is the outsider, and it's actually weird to say this, which is the Dutch, which also have the same Nike template as the uh, French, but they don't, they only have a light orange splash on there, and they use black as an accent color, which I personally do not like as much. I like my Dutch church is more with white, but I guess here here in the black is okay. Uh, I wish that the color was maybe also black. If you go for that look, would maybe look a little bit better. I have no info about the numbers. I guess we'll see that. I hope they retain the numbers um, that they have had in 2014. Maybe go with a standard font or yeah, we'll see. I would expect the numbers to be in black. As well, uh, I think it will be with red, uh, with red, with orange shorts and black socks. And the back, yeah, you have the black taping with the white lion, which is a nice feature. But yeah, again, I like my Dutch shirts with white rather than black. But I know this is a version that features here and there. Uh, the Avengers, it doesn't do much for me, honestly. Uh, this light blue with the navy accents, and again, Look at the back, it's plain. Uh, I wonder if, if it is, will be the case in reality. I think this is a missed chance. I, maybe I'm okay with the light blue and the navy, but then the lion, I think, needs to be orange. There needs to be some splash of orange there. Uh, even the taping is not orange. The only thing that's orange, I think, is an orange crown on the inside of the collar that no one sees. This, I think, is a major omission. Um, there got to be some orange there. Also not sure about the pattern. I think it tries to play off the famous 88 pattern that they had without really being it, because it's of course an Adidas template. Um, but yeah, not my favorite, not my favorite. I think I like it better if a navy blue or if they use a white, I think that makes a lot of sense. Even a black one uh, would make sense. The light blue, I think I only had it in 2008, um, was not exactly my favorite. I said it is now a million times. Now group two uh, is Belgium, the top seat. So we go from the Netherlands to Belgium. And yeah, we know this jersey, uh, it's hanging here even. The France jersey is here, Belgium jersey is here. Um, I really like it. I, just a few things, I wish that the number would go uh, in one of the red squares and there was a little bit more of an outline there, but overall um, I like how clean it is that the sides stripes are actually in darker red, which uh, matches quite nicely with the red of the trapezoids that are there. Uh, maybe the, the one thing is that the red trapezoids kind of uh, disappear a little bit on this shirt. There, they, they could have done something, but using this classic 1984 pattern was a great idea. It looks, it's a really nice Belgium shirt. And what we don't see is that the match detail goes right on the opposite of the Adidas, so it actually creates a somewhat balanced look. Still wonder if the number would be um, on the proper left and the Adidas logo on the proper right within the trapezoids. This could also have made a nice look. But I stand with double digit numbers, probably not, and you would have to inflate the pattern. The back again has the trapezoids below the collar. Again, the red is uh, missing and I already said that the Adidas font is not great. I also like the away jersey, uh, although it's the template, but I really like yellow as an away jersey for Belgium. I think it's a smart choice and how everything is arranged on there and also the striping, which is um, yeah a little bit like the French striping that we have here. Adidas, uh, where it, of course we have black instead of blue, but I think I like this a lot. This is this is just smart, uh, and even the template 
I know many people people are railing against this is used in club soccer all over. At the World Cup, the few teams that used this template, those were nice shirts. I give it that the club jerseys don't look as nice. And same thing on the back with the trapezoids. Here, of course, you cannot see the yellow. Uh, the other team in there is Switzerland. Uh, and here, if you look at close, it doesn't look as crazy uh, in match, except when there's a close up shot with all these weird things uh, the Evo Knit technology. And of course, that the upper is lighter than the lower is weird. Now, the cool thing is this all over pattern, which is kind of the should uh, be like a map of a mountain region. It would be great if this was actually some. Uh, map of Switzerland, but I don't think this is just a stylized pattern. That actually I find somewhat nice, although a little bit confusing. Uh, you really can see only up close, and where it gets a little bit too much, and from distance you cannot really see it. Uh, I also wish that the white collar would go around, but then again, it's a typical Swiss jersey. I really wish that they would not use the square flag. I know this is the proper flag. Do something with that. Use a roundel. Uh, which is the more classic look, uh, maybe use even a big white cross on the front. I think this would be make a great look for Switzerland. Uh, of course, they use the ugly Puma font, which I really, 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 really dislike. So, yeah, uh, doesn't make it much better. The away jersey is rather boring. Um, white with a round neck, crew neck now, where all it has the red here on the front and on the back. And other than that, it's very plain. Again, I wish they would do the square Swiss flag and this tiny. It just doesn't look quite right to me. Yeah, and on the back again, the horrible font for the numbers. Puma is prone to deliver one of these uh, on a regular basis. They usually have a good one, a bad one, a good one, a bad one. I think in 14 and in 14 and 16, they had actually two good fonts in a row. And finally, we get to Iceland. Uh, I like the idea, but on the blue shirt, I don't like how this is just so separated, the uh, sleeves. But this fire and ice idea looks nice. I don't like the color, honestly. Um, and also, then on the back, there's no red. Doesn't make much sense to me, honestly. I use a little bit more red on, on the back. Uh, font is one of the nicest ones uh, this time around. Um, the away jersey looks a lot better because there it actually makes sense. There is a this smooth transition. Of course, this uh, front of the collar, I wish it was just white or you had an all blue collar. But here, it's really you have the white jersey and then the pattern emerges. This does not happen for the home jersey where it looks kind of detached from the jersey. And yeah, you see it here uh, also with numbers. And the third jersey. I actually think it looks a little bit better than the home jersey because the reds uh, connect, but on the back it doesn't. So yeah, uh, I really love the Iceland jerseys in 2016. And yeah, those are the first two groups. Uh, again, for all these jerseys I have ratings on my blog. That uh, link is at the end of this video and also in the description below where you can actually see what I'm thinking, except for the Dutch jersey. But from what I'm seeing, I cannot see the Dutch jersey going either one higher than six, honestly. I'm not that enamored with those. Well, let me know what you think about all these jerseys. Um, which ones you like, which ones you dislike, where you agree with me, where you disagree with me. Maybe you have added some to your collection. I mean, I have quite a few World Cup jerseys hanging up there. Some are not from the World Cup, of course. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. There will be a second part coming tomorrow. Up until then, talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.